Hi everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. So today, the 30th of November is the official conclusion of the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season. It has been quite a year, has it not? I'm sure you can agree with me, not just in terms of the hurricane season, but with many other things. And this video is a special updated video. I know you might be wondering, what am I talking about? You know, you want to know if you're going to get rain today or not? No problem. We're going to get straight into that. But I just want to tell you the additional content that this video is going to be covering. So, of course, it will include the update, which is coming momentarily. But also, I want to talk about how the year has been for Weather Girl Danny. You know, I just wanted to share my view, things that I've experienced in relation to the hurricane season or not with my channel. Oh my gosh, guys, I have so much I want to talk about. But of course, I'll try to not make it too long. I mean, based on the length of the video, you know how long it is, but I don't want I'm recording right now. So we have quite a bit to discuss and I want to get it out there straight away. The hurricane season is hibernating for the next few months, but Weather Girl Danny is not. You know, I will continue to post content. I have been seeing comments from you guys asking if I will still be active in the off season. The answer is yes. It's not just about tropical storms and hurricanes. Yes, that's mostly what I cover, but I also focus on other weather systems which bring impacts. So I will be staying active. Yes, my updates may be a little bit less frequent than now where I post once every day. So I may post every other day or every two days. Doesn't matter whether girl Danny's here to keep you posted. Let's get into the update and then we head back a couple steps to April. All right, guys, so what is expected as we're going to be heading through today? We're looking at these satellite imagery right now. We can see that front and some of the associated activity in the Gulf of Mexico as well. So this front is actually dissipating. It won't be moving much further south and to bring in any substantial impacts to uh, other parts of the Caribbean. But some areas have already been experiencing some periods of some rainfall activity as a result of it. But on a whole for the Caribbean, we can see that there isn't really much going on right now let's zoom in there you can see it so there's a couple of thunderstorms popping up in the northwest caribbean but nothing too major is going on right now and then as it relates to the rainfall activity here we're looking at the map from the euro this goes to the very very early morning hours of tomorrow so we're seeing those yellows those oranges and those red shadings for some areas particularly for eastern nicaragua and going down to costa rica and northwestern panama Right in this area, there could be quite a bit of rainfall, similar story for Colombia. And then also as we head up into Belize, even the Keys as well, there could be some rainfall. So again, the front is still in the area. There are some remnants there, so that could help to induce some rainfall activity for portions of Belize. Uh, the Keys, as well as the Bay Islands of Honduras. Some of that could even spill into Mexico and Guatemala. Then as we head toward other areas going to Venezuela, the Guyanas as well, there may not be a whole lot of rainfall activity. So some areas may receive some rainfall, but it may not be anything too substantial or widespread. Trinidad, Tobago, similar stories. Some thunderstorms can pop up. And through uh, much of the Lesser Antilles, we can see some of those green shadings. So there, is some, uh, there are some patches of clouds coming in from the Atlantic with those passing by there could be some rainfall activity at times ABC is likely to be dry for the most part today much not expected for Puerto Rico the Virgin Islands Haiti the Dominican Republic Jamaica the Cayman Islands and Cuba even for sections of the Bahamas especially the Northwest Islands much rainfall is not expected but the southern Bahamas may experience a bit of rainfall activity uh, due to that front within the area Turks and Caicos not expected to receive much and then across much of the Caribbean islands, it's likely to be pretty windy today. This is the forecast from the Euro model, as we can see. And we uh, and there are all these areas in these different shades of purples and blues. So there could be winds from around 15 to 20 knots. And some gusts could be even higher than that. South Florida, the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, Cuba, Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, through the Lesser Antilles, especially for the Leeward Islands, the ABC Islands, uh, the northern coast of Venezuela, Colombia, San Andres, Providencia, and even heading into uh, the Yucatan as well, it could be quite windy. So that is what is expected as we head through today, guys. 
and then a bit in terms of the hurricane season so it has been a record-breaking season for sure there has been a lot more activity than expected and i'll talk more about that later but in terms of the summary there have been 20 storms this hurricane season but one was unnamed back in january so 20 storms in total seven hurricanes and three major hurricanes and a major hurricane is basically category three four or five now april 23rd that was the last day i went without posting an update video and let me tell you guys right through the hurricane season it was not the easiest to be posting so consistently and remember there was a if you've been around with weather girl danny for some time you would have known that there was a long stretch of time of me doing a dual update which means two updates per day every single day for a couple months i believe i started that back in late june or july i'm not quite sure but every single day since april 23rd up to now the 30th of november i have posted at least one update and honestly i'm super proud of myself for that because i have uh, had a lot of challenges because unprecedented things just came up out of the blue that i thought would deter me from actually getting the chance to do an update fortunately i was able to navigate through and get the updates posted so i just want to talk about a couple of those in this video and starting back to april even going into may and june as well that is when things got really busy for me because i was in 13th grade at the time and my final exams in april late april that was when we got the study break to prepare for the final exit exams cape the caribbean advanced proficiency examinations uh, which are done by Caribbean Examinations Council, CXC. So the four subjects I was doing at the time, Caribbean Studies, Environmental Science, Physics, and Information Technology. And uh, I mean, focusing on the tropics and also focusing on my academics, it was never easy, but I mean, I've done it in 2022 and I definitely did so in 2021. And I'm pleased to say that I had all four passes of those four three distinctions so i got a distinction in caribbean studies as well as physics and environmental science i was awarded for those on prize given uh, day which was actually last thursday on the 23rd of november and i also made it to the local merit list as one of the top performers in jamaica in environmental science really happy about that so yes despite studying and despite you know having my academic life still ongoing at the time I was able to navigate through and still got those videos posted while breaking down what I can to the best of my abilities because one of the main aims of my channel is to disseminate information in a way where everyone understands. I don't love using a lot of complex words and if I do, I like to break them down to say exactly what I mean by that. So yeah, I'm really happy about that. I'm really happy that I was able to reach hundreds of thousands of people i was looking back at my analytics and saw that i got several million views and all through the hurricane season and i cannot thank you guys enough because yes i've been doing a service to you but you have also been doing a service to me by helping my channel to grow and that is in turn helping me to grow as a person as well and i'm really just looking forward to improving because i'm all about improvement i'm all about growth that is something that I want to be sure of when next year, when I look back at this year, I can see where I have improved in something, you know? And you guys have played a crucial role in that. Even your encouraging words, I've seen so, I've gotten so many messages, uh, especially on Instagram, you guys just saying a couple of kind words and honestly, it means a lot. Big thank you for that. I feel like I've strayed a bit, so let's talk more hurricane season. So of course in July, there wasn't a whole lot happening. Things kind of got a little bit quiet, mostly with the tropical waves moving through. And then as we know with August, we had a little bit of a record breaking situation with four tropical cyclones, I believe, developing in 48 hours. That was a record there. Going toward the latter part of August and headed into the peak month, September. And of course, there were major hurricanes such as Idalia, which rapidly intensified and made landfall in Florida. There was also Franklin, fortunately, at peak intensity. Franklin uh, was offshore of anywhere, it didn't affect anyone as a Cat 4 hurricane. And the strongest hurricane of the season was Hurricane Lee. 
at peak intensity Lee did not affect anyone. I'm really happy about that. And this hurricane season was initially not even expected to be as active as it has been because of El Nino. Usually that influences the wind shear, it allows more wind shear to kick up, thus suppressing tropical development. And there's typically a bit of cooling where the sea surface temperatures are not highly favorable for a lot of rapid strength and especially outside the Caribbean because the Caribbean is warm all year round. So in other areas, uh, usually the temperatures wouldn't be so high, but this year was an exception. That increase in sea surface temperatures really helped to combat the effects of El Nino because that was a boost from many tropical cycles. So it's very warm waters which supported a lot of development, a lot of which was not expected initially because again, El Nino season. But the water temperature said nope. I'm doing it my way this year. So uh, we got Hurricane Lee, which rapidly strengthened into a Cat 5, did not affect anyone at the peak intensity. And then of course, things kind of slowly calmed down, but there were a couple of other systems which affected the Caribbean, such as Tammy, Hurricane Tammy, and Tropical Storm Philippe. And let's not forget potential Tropical Cyclone 22, the last system of the season really. Of course, it wasn't a named storm, but it did quite a number. Uh, in areas such as Jamaica and especially Hispaniola over in the Dominican Republic where there have been so many deaths as a result of the potential tropical cyclone. And it goes to show, you know, we, we don't need tropical storms and hurricanes to do that kind of damage. These little troughs that move through, they have that capability. And that is what I always emphasize, even right through the hurricane season. You know, let's not underestimate these things, even go into the off season, because I'm sure we will see some of these other little weather systems making their way through. They might not be uh, as strong, but they have the potential to especially unleash flooded and that is always the big concern so yes it has been quite the active season and going more on a personal tangent here with this hurricane season oh my gosh for me it has been a lot and uh, especially in terms of when I post my morning updates because I would be up from around just after 3 in the morning so I can get a video posted sometime after 5 or 6 local time here in Jamaica by the way. So I was up very early and that really messed up my sleep schedule where things, especially when things were really active, you know, I had to be up very early to ensure that I get a video done and to ensure that I get it posted on time. And I want to especially mention September. The peak of the hurricane season, the peak month where we saw a lot going on. I had major issues with my internet connection. We actually reached out to the service provider and they stated that usually an issue like that, it's kind of extensive. It would be resolved in roughly a month. So because of the very slow connection, I had to be up an hour earlier just to ensure that I got those updates out on time. Even the updates were not as bad because it's in the evening. I'm a bit more flexible during the day, but to get up in the mornings sounded very, you know, sleepy and tired. That was an issue. I also had power outage issues as well at times, but again, I got those videos posted. And I also want to mention the times when I got sick, when Weather Girl Danny was, you know, under the weather. Sometimes uh, I had throat issues, I even got the flu, and that took a massive toll on me. But I just said, you know, it, do it does not feel right going through the day knowing that I have not posted any updates because I know that there are many of you looking forward to when I post, especially when there was a lot going on and you just want to stay abreast with what is happening, you know? So it just did not feel right for me to be going through the day and not posting. I felt guilty. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get it done. Even if it's just for five minutes, I'm going to let you guys know what is happening. So yeah. And even with having reduced amounts of sleep, that's definitely something I'll be working on, especially now that things have kind of slowed because I've been struggling with anxiety for much of my life, really. And it is very difficult to sleep in the daytime unless I am sick. If I'm not sick, it's going to be difficult. So that is something that I have been fixing. I have been doing better. I have been getting more rest, you know, and I'm just going to be using this time to rejuvenate myself and just to improve in ways I can. And we'll continue to keep you guys posted. So yes, that is what I wanted to share with you in this update. It has been quite the long season and it's just a pause for now it is going to resume and of course those predictions will start rolling out in their numbers april 
and even in, uh, especially in May as well. And I believe the tropical storm risk, they usually post their prediction in the latter part of December. After the end of the hurricane season, they release their first prediction for next hurricane season. So we have time, guys. It's time to breathe that sigh of relief. If you haven't yet done so, you know the hurricane season is over, but that does not mean we won't see anything form in the off season months, December through May. We can see some storms try to form. Most times though, they're offshore, so that's the good news. However, I'm here to keep you posted. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I know it has been quite lengthy by now should be i hope you enjoyed it but that is what i wanted to share and you can share your thoughts down in the comments of the hurricane season or anything really just you know let's talk and have some fun so that is it for now and have a wonderful rest of day and you know what i always say remember to be weatherwise